Okay, so hi there folks. In this another video for number theory, we're still in the divisibility theory and the fundamental theorem of arithmetic. We're now on theorem 3. We're going to name this theorem 3 because we're going to use this in the future. So this is kind of linked to linear combination. Okay, so this states that this something here is a linear combination. So well, let's state that formally. Let A, B, C, alpha, and beta to be integers. Then if A divides B and A divides C, then a divides the quantity of alpha times beta, or rather, alpha b plus beta c. Again, if a divides b and a divides c, then a divides the quantity alpha b plus beta c. So let's give a proof of this theorem. Okay. Let's change the color to red, and then here we go. Let's give a proof. Again, going back to the concept of divisibility, okay, here. Um, I will not write that anymore. You can watch the two previous videos for that. So since A divides B and A divides C, let's make use of the same var variables, okay? Then there exists some M and N in the integers such that B put it here, b is equal to a times m, meaning there's a certain m. If we're going to multiply that m to the b, it will give, uh, if we're going to multiply that this m to a, it will give us b. And c is equal to a times n. Okay, meaning there's a certain n. If we're going to multiply that n to a, it will give us c. Okay, so we want to prove, uh, we want to prove Oh, let's move down below. We want to prove this. Actually, we want to prove this. We want to prove that. Oops. We want to prove that A divides this alpha B plus beta C. So let's start in this part here. Then alpha B plus beta C. Uh, so we want to show that is we show we show that um let's put it down here alpha b plus beta c is equal to we're going to substitute the values of b as in here and the c as in here so let's what what we'll have is alpha b is am b times am let's put it a little bit down here you 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 know that that this line will be uh, lengthy plus beta c b uh, c is a n a n okay so let's get rid of the grouping shall we say that alpha a m is plus beta a n now what we can do here is that or let's give some space here alpha a m plus beta a n. Now notice in the last part there, in this part, um, both of the terms have a. So what we can do is by common monomial factoring, we can get the a in, from both parts so that so that it will be written as a times the quantity of alpha m plus beta n. Okay, so if we're going to connect this, this to endpoints this one and this one here we can say that that is alpha b plus beta c is equal to a times the quantity of alpha m plus beta n okay now we can see here that this alpha b plus beta c is equal to a times the quantity of this alpha m Okay, alpha m plus beta n. We want to show first that this quantity here is some parts of the integers. So we say by by the closure loss, that is the closure property of multiplication used in both of them here, this term and this term, and by the closure property of addition, the result of this number here is still part of the integers. So that is by closure loss, um, by the law of by the axiom of addition and multiplication and by closure. So we'll say 
by the closure loss. Let's move this a little bit uh, more. Upward rather. <laughs> by closure loss. This quantity here, alpha m plus beta n, is still parts, is an element of the integers. Okay? Now, since if this is the element, this is an element of integers, maybe we can say before that, let's call this q. So let's call this Q, and we'll say that this Q, by closure loss, is an element of the integers. Okay, is in the set of the integers. So if that's the case, we can say that alpha B, um, hence alpha B plus beta C is equal to a Q, and this cube is just this. Okay, that is. Now, clearly, we can see here that A is a factor of alpha B plus beta C. That is, A divides alpha B plus beta C. Okay, and that, that is the end of proof. Let's put the QED over here. Okay, so that's the end of our proof. Let's have a little bit of a, of a wrap-up for this case. This is quite... A long proof not really that very long okay so let's read the theorem again and then let's go through the proof one more time so theorem 3 states that also known as or presents the linear combination let a b c alpha and beta be integers then if alpha or rather sorry if a divides b and a divides c then a divide uh, a divides the quantity alpha b plus beta c so in our proof we started with our usual thing that we are doing okay we transform this this uh, division notation into an equation since a divides b and a divides c then there exists some m and n in the integer such that if we're going to multiply this a to this certain m it will give us b and if we're going to multiply this a to this certain n it will give us c since saying simply saying that a is a factor of c a is also a factor of b if we are multiplying this a to a certain number okay m and n respectively. Now we want to prove that A divides alpha B plus beta C. So we show that starting in this part here. Let's put this up. Okay, so starting in this part here. So we say that alpha B plus beta C, we substitute the values. Okay, since we say that b is equal to a times m and c is equal to a times n. So we substitute b as a m and c as a n. And then we we get rid of the parentheses. And then um, by common monomial factoring, we saw that we have an a here. We have also an a here. So we got that a out. And then we have alpha m plus beta n. That is, this, this part is equal to this part. Okay, this left us side of the equation is equal to the right side of the equation. That is, alpha b plus beta c is equal to a times the quantity of alpha m plus beta n. Now, we want to make sure that this is one, or this is an integer, okay? By closure laws, by closure law of multiplication applied here, and closure law of addition applied to the whole term, we say that this alpha m plus beta n is equal to certain q, to a certain q, which is part of the integers. Hence, alpha b plus beta c is equal to a times q. Okay, a times q, that is, a is a factor of alpha b plus beta c, and that is what, that is what we want to prove. Okay, so that's it for this video. Um, I hope you got the proof for, or you understood the proof of theorem 3. Um, that's it for now. Thank you very much. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and see you soon. Bye!